Hi guys, Roxanne here from Tiny Home Living. Well, I've just come out to the tiny house. Um, Chris has got the fire going to warm it up in here. I just threw some more logs on to get it uh, going because I might put another coat of oil on this. Now it feels a little sticky. So I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. Might just let it continue to heat up. And you can see where it's uh, got a little gummy here where one of the other pans was sitting there. So if anybody has any advice on this, I my instinct is telling me to clean off the gummy bits, but I think I need that um, little chain mail thing from Lee Valley to do that. Um, but anyway, it's uh, it's getting heated up. I might just leave this. Oh, that's not gummy at all. There, it's like, oh, maybe a little, a little oily. So I might just leave it on the heat again today and leave it be. It's dried out in the bottom there again, so I might put a little bit on there. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm not going to fuss too much with that today. Um, we're, we're going to try and figure out what we need for a piece of plywood because we have to go to town tomorrow um, to do the shelves for these food vaults. And Chris ran up to uh, Bob and Rita's to get the window trim too so that he can um, get this window sill and window jam done. So we've got to figure out how deep to make this plywood because it appears I'm going to have to pull these out to fill and to get stuff out of them. So we got to figure that out. And I think Chris is going to try and get the window trim done. It'd be nice because I keep putting stuff on here and this isn't attached yet. I keep forgetting about that. And then I might add another coat of paint after he's got this on here. And I don't know if you saw a previous video, but he's going to put some blocks under this. Right there and then spray foam um, so there's space to spray foam around the window again in addition to the spray foam around the window itself so now he got um, the gray paint done he was gonna do red paint today so I don't know if he'll get that done or not because I started whining about the window jam so it'd be nice if he could get the window jam in that window and then this window in here because you know as you can see your eye goes to the rough wood right away well my eye does and um so it'll it'll make it look really finished in here and again um I think the high gloss paint is up at Bob and Rita's because he's been doing the painting up there so I will have to go around and with a, a pointy brush and get this filled in uh, a little bit because of course that'll make me cuckoo well more cuckoo this here but that I mean that uh, is going to be really quick and easy to do um, I will have to do up here too and then the mirror is going to cover most of this but I'm not putting uh, wall cabinets on the bathroom um, like the other bathroom so uh, this is going to show here and that will never do so and of course he doesn't have the trim on here yet either um, you can see where the wood is actually buckling out here have to get the carpenter on that um, so yeah not a big deal but uh, I um, might end up putting something on the wall here some of my um, art or maybe some pictures or something so I'll, I'll decide on that once the mirror is on the wall. So once we get these big things, now they were in the way in the other sea container, now they're in the way here. So that really has to be done. Get that done. Get that done, the red paint, the window jams, and um, I think we were talking too about getting, we're gonna cut the plywood in a certain way so that I have, two 15 inch strips left over to put a, a shelf up high and then along that wall as well. The water heater will be going over there so if you go along this wall and this wall that's you know eight and probably four or five so you know about 13 or 14 feet of shelf space up there 
that uh, I can utilize right away to get stuff out of the way. So that's the plan for today. And I will probably end up being able to have the shelf up high and then another shelf underneath at least one, I think. So that's going to get a lot of stuff out of the way um, once we get this cleared out. And we still have to put those panels on the ends of the cabinets too. So just a lot of finishing stuff. And um, I haven't heard um, from Home Depot about, I keep getting caught on these handles, I can barely get through. I haven't heard from Home Depot about my laminate either. It was supposed to be in, I think, last week. Now, <laughs> when I worked in the kitchen department at Home Depot, almost every single order of laminate was delivered by UPS and it was delivered all smashed to pieces on the edges. So I should actually phone them and say, hmm, my laminate didn't have to happen to come in all smashed on the edge because if you discount it for me, I'll take it anyway because that's what happens. And it gets put at the back of the building uh, on clearance and then they reorder it. So I should actually call them and see if that's what happened because they usually do come in on time. It's just they're smashed to pieces when they come. I don't know why they keep shipping it the same way, but anyway, that's what happens. So I haven't got my laminate yet. So until I can get the laminate and get the countertops built, um, and I have thought about delaying that too because of the price of plywood. It's skyrocketed again too and you need the plywood to um, glue the laminate to. So it'll depend. I don't know. Uh, uh, plywood was down to like 40 to some dollars a sheet and now it went back up to 85. I'm sure, you know, they'll blame something on that or blame that on something. But um, Anyway, there's no reason that the plywood would, uh, should double in price again. So I might actually uh, work on my coat rack, uh, painting this bookcase, um, doing some other things, and wait for the price of the laminate to come down, or the uh, plywood to come down again. I am going to get one sheet tomorrow. I'll choke on that so that uh, I can get these food vaults put away because they are absolutely driving me nuts. I trip on this bag of brown sugar every time I come by here and it's just enough to twist my broken ankle sideways uh, enough that uh, <laughs> it hurts and makes me say bad things. <laughs> You'd think I would know but you just it's easy to not see it and I, I hit I kick it with my left foot every time I walk by. Getting a little tired of that already. So anyway, not sure where Christopher has gone, but um, see if I get some work out of him today. Push right in. Uh, like even with the front of the wall. 
and I wanted enough room to get us to flush with this side. Foam to go behind them. So this flush. Oh, I see. Okay. So the foam can go in behind the shims. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. Now I got about an inch this way. An inch in between. Yeah. Do you, did you want to measure here? Is that... Yeah, looks like you're going to be. Yeah. How's that? That looks pretty Half good. Inch. I would have lined it up straight up there. Yeah. Do you want me to measure how much I've got here? No, I can put my ball back. Okay. Looks the same there. Uh, yep, yeah. looks floor. pretty level. Okay. And then I'm going to shim this down. Okay. Get it straight and then. So are you just going to nail it where the shims are, the blocks are? Yeah. Okay. Let me shape it. Yeah, get the good in there. Do you have a short level that we can put on here? Cell. and then what he's going to do is spray foam in here and we pulled the, the block forward a little bit so the spray foam will go in and fill in between the front of this block and the actual vinyl window and then there's room for lots of spray foam around the window and in the top as well so you can see the spray foam in around the window this isn't going to be another big layer of spray foam all the way around the window. Okay. Cut some, some blocks. Look at the girls. I think that's the inspector. <laughs> yeah, I did. Thank you. 
feet of foam all the way around the window. Underneath too. And I hope there's enough in that can left to do um, the bathroom window as well. Get this on before the foam dries in case there's a bowl. Mm. There we go. This needs a top, so it'll be a mess if I stick it. Yeah. Ooh, what happened here? I was gonna say. <laughs> Don't look at me. I'm not the foam guy. <laughs> it must be the. It's got to be the bottom. But this yeah. is going to show. So I have to curve it. So that's going to go under there. Well, like I said, I gotta. I'm going to put more paint on anyway, right? And on that one too. <laughs> that's, that'll dry. Well, that might not even be needed though, right, Chris? Yeah, that's how it's supposed to look. Right. Yeah, I think that trim is going to have to be ripped in almost a half mm -hmm. to make. Uh, okay, I'll get a measurement from here to here. Mm-hmm. You need to hold it? No. Let's check it here. Ooh. 
Just thought I'd mention, guys, most people buy these cans and it has a little straw with it. But if you buy <coughs> enough of them, uh, the ones that go with the can or with the gun are cheaper. So it's almost worth buying the gun. I think it was about 72 bucks. And then the foam is cheaper. Um, and it does a lot better job. Now you do have to get the cleaner. Uh, like Chris will have to use the cleaner on the gun now that it's, so it doesn't plug up. But um, or, you, or you can just leave it like this with the with it closed. Yeah. So till next um, time. Just thought people might be interested in the gun as opposed to just the can with the little straw on it. So you know if you're doing as much like if you're doing a whole house. Uh, it might be worth it. So you can see we've got uh, lots of, yeah, and that says window and door on it. It's a low expansion. If you get the other stuff, it's going to go all over the place. Okay, so that's good to know. So this is low expansion, so it doesn't, yeah. they have different types. Some like, of it just kind of goes everywhere, and you'll see that with some. Now, um, what we're doing here, uh, I'm going to put another coat of paint on here because then it'll fill the nail holes and then uh, Chris will cut the foam off that's come through and then put uh, caulking around here. But this again gives us a really nice um, seal all the way around against the window. I've taken these vents off. I've got some clean water and I'm going to clean um, the Schluter with a little uh, scouring pad foam uh, to get the stuff off from the grouting and then because uh, Chris is worried that if I use the scrubbing brush then it might mark the paint again so I'm going to do that before he puts another coat of paint on. So Chris's battery died for his nailer and he can't find the second one anywhere so uh, in the time that he's been looking for it and I've been looking for it uh, the other one's probably going to be charged so he'll be able to get some of this window done. Um, now I have scrubbed the Schluter and put the painter's tape on it so he can go ahead and get this another coat of red paint done on here. And he's just cutting the panel for here to length but again he's gonna get the paint done here first um, and then put the panel on then you don't have to cut in or anything. So, and, and same with this panel, um, it goes on to the base cabinet here, and he's going to do that paint right there first. Um, so this windowsill is all done. I'll be able to put some more paint on that. Um, we can't put the trim on there. He forgot how deep the cabinets are up here, so he made a bigger trim um, with a little, another piece on and can't do that. So I've got the fridge gable uh, and the baseboard taped off here so he can slap some red paint on there and this wall too and then we'll have to do a second coat on this wall tomorrow. And then after I get some more paint on here then he'll put a bead of caulking around here and um, when Chris caulks it's like watching a machine do caulking. He's done so much of it over the years. So, get this red paint done today. One coat, second coat tomorrow. And uh, we were just going over measurements again for the coat rack I want to do here. Once we get some of this stuff out of the way, and we've discovered um, we can do 17 inch shelves for that, which will leave me with, um, instead of 16, 17, 17 inch deep shelves that are going to go up by the ceiling for the big pots and stuff. So most of the day I had the um, door ajar a little bit because then all the heat is coming in here. Um, closed the flue once the fire was going good. So all the heat was coming into the room. It's really cozy. It's almost getting too hot in here now. So as soon as I closed the door, the um, temperature went up to 300 degrees. So I decided to put um, our leftover stew in the oven to heat up because then, like I said again, um, I'm not using propane. I just put a couple more logs on the fire. This, I think, is poplar, so it burns really quickly. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna heat the heating supper up right now while Chris is doing that coat of paint. 
and um, again not using propane so you can see how once uh, I'm living in here you're, you're you know whether you want to make a cup of coffee fry some eggs whatever um, in the winter you're never going to be using your propane you're not going to be using the propane heater and you're not going to be using the propane to cook or make coffee or anything so it's going to save a lot um, in the winter when you need it the most because we've gone through a lot of propane trying to get those generators working properly. There's the window jam, bathroom window jam done. Um, so again, like I said, I'll put another coat of paint on to fill these nail holes. And then Chris will caulk with silicone around the inside there. Finish it off nice. Now this is the corbels that I've been talking about. I'll just stand back a bit so you can see them better. So basically the piece of wood will go behind them like that. Um, but stop, Chris will cut it around this to shape, uh, to the shape of the wood. Um, it'll end right here. The shelf, the cutoff from the fridge gable will go on top here and it hangs over just a little bit. He'll drill a hole um, through here to put it on the wall and then he's going to drill one up at the top, so at an angle. Um, so it won't be seen and then we'll put a, a little plug in here and then the wood that we dug out of the sea container is going to go here and then these I'll put them down fairly low because if they're too high up then you're going to have trouble hanging your coat on there because you'll be hitting the top of the shelf or the underneath of the shelf so that's kind of what it's going to look like um, I think I've got three of these hooks three or four to put on here and again I've got the black accents on the white which I think will look really nice and then I've got some little baskets that I keep my gloves and scarves in in the winter that can go on top of there and then I'll probably have um, a shoe rack or something on the floor underneath so this is going to be one of the things that we'll be doing next but we've got to get these food vaults um, out of the way and taken care of first so that's it for today guys. I'm pretty happy with that. The window jams done. Just looking in there and seeing that window jam just makes me happy. And um, Chris will, he's decided that, um, he said he thinks it'll take him about three hours to get the paint, a coat of this paint done tomorrow. So he's going to wait till tomorrow. It's getting late. We're both hungry. And uh, so I think that's it for today. Supper's in the beautiful wood cook stove. <laughs> I just love the stove. I just love coming in here and seeing my stove every day. So that's it for today, guys. Hope you're enjoying the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share this video with your family and friends. We'll see you next time.